What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Insurrection Inc. podcast. We want to thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoy the show. What's up, and welcome to the Out of Our League Guests podcast. Today we have uh, me, <laughs> Porter, uh, with Jay, Menace, Monty, Peter, and Stratty. And the guest of honor for today, the first time we've interviewed someone on this podcast, actually. It's a hell of a way to start. Uh, you know him, you love him, Whiskey and Rebellion, currently at Cocktails and Compliance on Instagram. Uh, what's up, Whiskey? Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. Out of, so out of your head. Yeah, fucking right. Thank you. <laughs> 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 I'm certain we'll get off topic and get to some more fun stuff, but we wanted to start with something kind of serious, uh, what I got when I first got Whiskey's attention with a few months ago, and that is kind of an unorthodox theory of the Second Amendment. So in libertarian circles, people like to praise the Second Amendment a lot, and it is a, a good tool occasionally, um, or often even, but I had a different theory about why it was written and how it, was, how it came to be in the Constitution. So... Whiskey has talked before um, in his own podcast on YouTube about how he sees the Constitution, the, the ratification of the Constitution, as the beginning of the end of American liberty. Uh, and I think as, as we're all anarchists, I think we tend to agree with that. Mm. But we still tend to you know, like the Second Amendment because we, you know, we like protecting gun rights. That's an important, a very important thing, one of the most important rights. Uh, but my theory was first laid out in a comment under one of his posts. It was a repost of uh, someone else's proposed change to the Second Amendment, uh, like a rewording to make it more clear. And it was meant to be funny. It was pretty good. But I said (laughs) in a comment under that post, hot take, the Second Amendment was never about securing gun rights for the American people. It was a Federalist maneuver to trick the Anti-Federalists into agreeing to ratify the Constitution, which signaled the beginning of the end of American liberty. And Whiskey and I went back and the replies to that comment a little bit, and um, he eventually said that, uh, bro, I, I see it that way. I just never thought of that. You just connected the dots for me. So I wanted well, to kind of go yeah, back it was to just that like, oh, and I'm sorry. see what Whiskey's thoughts were. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I just think it's another little piece of the same sort of political maneuvering that happened back then. You know, like it wasn't just uh, like the Second Amendment for instance, um, when you look at like in order for them to get uh, most of these states to ratify, you know, like the big one was slavery. Um, like right. The founders right. like like Thomas Jefferson, for example, uh, like Thomas Jefferson was he, when he was in the House of Burgesses before the uh, Revolutionary War, like he tried to outlaw slavery. Right. Which was like radical back yeah. then. Um, but even people who were as freedom minded as Thomas Jefferson, like he was one of the most, but um, even the ones who, uh, you know, were just right there with them, like they didn't see a problem in like compromising with certain things. And that's why, like, yeah, I think the, the constitution was sort of the beginning of the end because it set up so many, it set up so many like loopholes and, um, I, I don't think that the founders really comprehended. I know that they spent a lot of time, you know, trying to write out the constitution and argue over uh, what should be added and what shouldn't be. But I don't think that they really comprehended that, you know, these little um, like cracks that they had in their writing. Um, but I, I don't think they were looking a hundred years into the future, right. Or like 200 years into the right, future. Right. I think that it was more of, like, yeah, this is the immediate short term. We need to get this shit ratified, you know, so that we can, um, like, move on to, uh, we can move on to, um, like, governing this country. But, yeah, and the Constitutional Convention was a response to your namesake, the Whiskey Rebellion. Um, yes. it, because they had trouble, they didn't have a centralized government that could put down a revolution by uh, agitated citizenry. And so that's why they came together to make the Constitution, to create a more powerful central government. It had nothing to do with limiting government. It was all about expanding government power from what they had at the time. It was yeah, also it was a coup. Good. Yeah, essentially. It, it was. Like, yeah, it was, a, it was a bloodless coup. Hmm. But, and you mentioned... Yeah, I mean, go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, that's like... 
you know, why I said that um, I think it was the beginning of the end because there were just so many weaknesses that it had and how it was put into effect. Um, you know, we're, you weren't going to set up like a thousand year Roman, <laughs> you know, empire <laughs> uh, with the Constitution. And we're kind of seeing that now, like it's, it's yeah. really starting to fall apart. Things are derailing fast. Yeah. 2020 hindsight, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and you also mentioned that, um, that there was a lot of debate over the wording even back then. So it's pretty clear, like there had to be, there was inevitably going to be debate into the future about what the, the wording of the constitution meant. And so even the people um, who generally tend to fall towards libertarian or like the constitutional conservative side who say they're for a strict interpretation of the constitution that didn't even exist when it was written. They had like, <laughs> they disagreed on what it mean, what it meant yeah, back absolutely. when it was first written and ratified. Like there's no way it was meant to have a, one singular meaning now. I'm glad you brought a, that a up. Huge weakness of it because that's always like my big point to constitutionalists, right? Is that um, like it just wasn't like it wasn't uh, a sure thing then. It's not a sure thing now, and you can argue over really anything. They're just words on paper. So as long as you know you can slowly but surely um, change people's ideas on what those words mean, it's like the word regulated. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like back then it was just to make regular, but now it's like, oh no, it's government like has to regulate it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Motherfuckers. And if of you course think children it, are dying. Yeah, exactly. Right. Throw away, burn the constitution, the kids are dying. <laughs> um, if David if David Hogg cries on TV, your rights don't exist anymore. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> when David Hogg cries, like my rights are forfeit. Yeah. <laughs> well, that Man, is... that's fear mongering for you. <laughs> but if you think about it too, like how how fucking weak is the Constitution? If really you can just argue over specific words and then get rid of, um, like get rid of the main meaning behind those words. Like there is a there is a very clear fucking reason why the Second Amendment was put into the Constitution, right? Yeah, right. But yeah, now I mean... that's just completely disregarded, and instead what they're focusing on is how to turn. Uh, that 18th century um, grammar and syntax like into an argument for getting rid of guns or having the state regulate what guns you can and cannot have. Like that's yeah, weak. Which, which shows the, the folly of entrusting your rights to a piece of paper because when something that can be, when there's something that can be in, like interpreted and reinterpreted, then it's not absolute by definition. Whereas we believe that natural rights are absolute. So when you can define them out of the equation, then that's that's a huge weakness, and it's hard to kind of drive home that point to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, I tried really hard uh, when I was, you know, trying to fight the whole anarchism idea that was popping up <laughs> in the back of my head. I tried yeah. really hard to like stay at constitutionalist, right? <laughs> but I, I couldn't fucking do it. <laughs> I think Same a lot here. of us went through that phase. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And I mean, Spooner yeah, yeah. was since the 1840s or 1850s. He had Spooner talking about the weakness of the Constitution already, saying that oh yeah, he it either already. was yeah, it was oh, either yeah. useless to stop us from getting here, or it enabled us to get here. Which I think, obviously, the latter is more correct in hindsight. So yeah, and I mean, all of his shit like started essentially because he wanted to create a competitor to the post office, mm -hmm. right? But the Constitution, yeah. the, the post yeah. office was supposed to be done by the United States government. <laughs> it's like, okay. According now to the Constitution, got, actually. <laughs> yeah, now we got like FedEx and shit and they're okay with it, but for Spooner... Yeah, and they, and they smash your package shit, before dude. it shows up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of things that were written a while ago, I think um, oh. Menace wanted to discuss some of your old tweets. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, let's do it. Yeah, we're we're can't um, I you today. No, dude, I, I love this shit because like people cannot get it through their heads that you know people change their views on stuff. Like I've changed my views on stuff in the last four years that you oh, know, this is I've recent been... stuff. I'm not calling you out on any of that. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, no, I like hear it, this is even better. Uh, yeah, we don't no, have too like, much digging. Yeah. I like uh, a lot of your tweets. They're all super based stuff. But uh, one really stuck out because you, you posted it on Instagram, that's where I saw it. One really stuck out from the rest. Um, let's see if I can find it again. Uh, this is what you said, and I quote, Kings, 
Stop worrying about your dick stuff. It's your dick. <laughs> cherish it. Respect it. The only reason you care is because of women, and women aren't worth worrying about. They're pushing their self confidence issues on us. Don't let them bring you down. And uh, Are you asking if I'm small peen gang? I mean, I, I just noticed in the Instagram <laughs> caption that you clarified you weren't, but I figured I'd ask anyway. And what other context there was <laughs> to this tweet? Mm. <laughs> No, so that was just me getting drunk, uh, <laughs> watching some show, and some dude was like fretting about. I can't even remember what the show was, but he was just fretting about like having a small penis, and it was like driving. You know, it was like driving him insane and uh, causing all these problems. And I was just like, "This is so fucking stupid." Because I made the click that like women are the ones who you know generally they're self-conscious and shit like that <laughs> and it just seems like that's something where they kind of like throw their self-consciousness at men but um oh. no other than that like <laughs> that was really it there's no like crazy story yeah. but so I by watching gonna, i knew TV, it was gonna stir by watching shit. tv <laughs> by watching tv you meant you were drunkenly talking to yourself in the mirror oh dude that's my <laughs> that's my whole twitter <laughs> like that's all that's all twitter is to me twitter that's is like when it. when i get drunk and when i get high i get on twitter <laughs> wait whiskey have you heard of this uh documentary is called a uh, wait hold on it's called unhung hero it's it's literally about this dude with a small dick <laughs> and the whole documentary is about him like coming to terms with that later on in life <laughs> And it's That's like, hilarious, it's like, but no, I have you know, you need, Yeah, dude, you need to watch it. It's hilarious. And like, you're just going to, like, at, at the end of this, at the end of it, you're just going to be like, they made a whole fucking documentary about that? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, right. <laughs> Why were you watching that, Stratty? Well, on this podcast. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, notes. Notes. <laughs> you're taking notes. <laughs> what what was <would> you <laughs> say? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's like, that's the best thing I think about Twitter to me is that I just, I don't give a shit. Um about twitter i you know i don't really give a shit about like the instagram much either but like the twitter is really just shit stirring you know what i mean that's like all that's all it really is to me and it's kind of funny being able to tweet at like famous people (laughs) (laughs) like calling calling bernie um whatever the fuck you want just on twitter (laughs) like that's funny to me (laughs) it's almost surreal Oh yeah, I know. It, like, it's, it's the fucking great. It's cool to think that, like, uh, it, well, on yeah, this podcast, cool think, we like, like talking about obscure units of measurement. <laughs> and, oh god! <laughs> so here we go. One of them we talked about in the previous episode is called the star. That's the serious to autism ratio. Uh, and uh, I'm going to assume you haven't listened to anything else we put out. <laughs> so, <Not exactly>. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not mad. Don't worry. The yeah, we're not quality. Autism ratio. I like it. <laughs> yeah, we use it c- to kind of gauge all libertarian interactions on the internet because they all range somewhere from serious to autistic. Uh, <laughs> it's really great. It's been a great tool. But something else um, that one of our members came up with oh, in a group God. chat one time I, I do not remember the context for this at all. I just had the screenshot of his sole message of, of him asking someone what his dick to height ratio was. <laughs> Monty was the person who did this. So uh, I believe it was on the E-Militia podcast one time, and maybe you posted it elsewhere as well. You said you were six foot seven one time. And now you've posted tweets defending guys with small dicks, which, <laughs> you know, makes us make assumptions about you. Dude, you can't so, see it right now, but I'm holding my, I'm holding my fingers up in an L. You know, like the, the tall, like tall guy, small dick, and then flipping it over, and it's like short guy, long dick. <laughs> so you can you can get the idea where I'm going with this, and I'm gonna yeah, let this is to take over. Serious, in a serious fucking autism coming out right here. I think, yeah. I think you have a very, very small dick to height ratio. Full blown, full blown Asperger's. I mean, how can I couldn't really have like a big ratio if I'm six seven, right? I'd have to have a garden hose. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, oh, Mandingo exists. <laughs> so, Monty, you uh, you did some calculations one time in another group chat. About... <laughs> this is not very scientific, for the record. <laughs> no. What do you mean? It's been peer reviewed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah peer reviewed by me. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's a peer. Yeah. 
Monty, you did some calculations on the average male dick to height three. Right, <laughs> dick to height ratio. I can't even speak. I'm trying. Oh to my laugh. god! Trying not to laugh. Um, <laughs> and if, if the average uh, male dick is 5.5 inches and the average male height is 70 inches, then there's a 5.5 to 70 DTHR. So whiskey, we're not going to make you expose yourself too much, but are you above or below that? <laughs> the 70, dude. Am I like getting a calculator out right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. There's actually a math test. If you yeah. fail, uh, you know this sorry, is the insurrection. Let's see. So yeah, I'm just go. doing plus. Let's see, twelve percent on the height. <laughs> plus, you really got it out. Hey, yeah. No, I'm I'm just about there, guys. We're okay. Okay, good. All right, you're fine. <laughs> okay, plus twelve plus twelve percent on the numerator, plus twelve percent on the denominator. I think I'm okay. See, these aren't the questions you'll get on Freeman Beyond the Wall or the English. Oh, no, 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 no. Only questions you'll get here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus. <laughs> New topic. Yeah, do you want to see? You yeah, see yeah, it's move on. It becomes a violent star transition. Uh, <laughs> Peter, I think you wanted to take this one. Uh, uh, we're going to ask you about some meme warfare in light of recent events. All right. Yeah, it was the meme warfare question. I was just curious because I saw a tweet you mentioned about like how the, the Boogaloo got all mainstream. Uh, you you want to explain more about that? Because it's a crazy thing, though. I've seen it on like, uh, uh, I believe it was MSNBC that uh, talked about the Boogaloo. Yeah. But it was uh, crazy how that got mainstream. But is that like a good thing or a bad thing? Um, I personally think it's a good thing. Hmm. Um, really? Yeah, the problem. So, man, this is like a yeah, this is a lot. Uh, <laughs> so, I think it's a good thing that could go bad. You mm. know what I mean? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I yeah, I think that like having people openly talking about you know insurrection and shit like that is one hell of a check to government, right? And I think that. We've also kind of, God, how do, yeah, how do I even put this into words? <laughs> um, uh, generally, generally, I think it's good. I think it's going to get some people who are fucking idiots in trouble. <laughs> Boogaloo Clyde. Um, yeah, there's some people just like, I don't know, OPSEC and stuff like that. They're, they're fucking retards, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I've they might get put too, on a watch list, something like that. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure that, you know, anybody who likes anything that I, I post or really any... Um, we have a podcast you know, called Google Insurrection Inc. Inc. I'm just going to go ahead and assume we're all yeah, on the I think we yeah. probably all yeah, are. Yeah, right probably. Too. You know, it's just, meta, it's just metadata shit right now, but <laughs> yeah. keep it up long enough, you know. Um, But, yeah, I think that uh, there's also been... I've seen a lot more... Um, I've seen a lot more pages where just, you know, some red flags like go up <laughs> in my head and I, I keep my distance from them. And, you know, they've tried to like come into inboxes and shit, asking really personal questions and, like that. Right. I, I don't know what the fuck they're trying to accomplish. So, I don't know. Whiskey, like, how do I make a but... silencer out of an oil filter? A fertilizer to racing like fuel do I need? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, just, Fed. Just, just <laughs> stupid <laughs> questions. Um, but, you know, overall, I do think it's good because, like I've said before, four years ago, when this when I like started the page, the only people that I really remember from back then were Mina's Revenge, um, Babylon Step Back, or Anti-State. And then uh, one other dude named, he was ANCAP versus the world. And um, his name was like Nick or something. I wonder where that dude is. But like, that was it. Right, mm -hmm. there weren't there weren't any other like ancaps that were on Politogram. There were some libertarians, but it was mostly like it was kind of formed in the era of like get fucking owned, libtard, like snowflakes get wrecked. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, the meme war <laughs> 2016 yeah. is kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah, but then you know, like right after 2016. Um, the longer that Trump was in office, we just saw like more and more people coming over to like, you know, the hardcore libertarian camp. Um, and just to have 
like that many people talking about something that I didn't see four years ago and then it being in the mainstream, like, that's fucking badass to me, right? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, that's the really cool that so. part, like that it's a, a balance uh, kind of against the government, like to have people openly yeah. talking about mm. um, violent revolution. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, if you get people guys, angry, some people shitting their pants right now. <laughs> well, absolutely. Like you guys, um, I know you guys had said you wanted to talk about uh, the Alex thing in New York too. Mm -hmm. um, that's just another example, though, of like how this could possibly get bad. Um, oh yeah. Just with, uh, you know, the tactics that are going to be used to discredit the community. Um. They're going to be pretty hardcore, and I don't think a lot of people are ready for it. So, Definitely, and then yeah. like, like people don't the... like we meme a lot, right? Um, and people have like kind of got the underlying message, but I don't think reality has really set in. That's what I was most. just about to say. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll since, have to see. you've I... seen it, you just talked about how you, you uh, when you first joined Politogram, um, there weren't many end caps. You've seen this whole explosion and growth in the Liberty community on there. But I'm worried that yeah, the Boogaloo nuts. memes have given people the, the wrong idea of libertarianism to a certain extent. Like, they're, well, they're often and funny, mostly, like they're good, but... Yeah, and mostly, too, I think... Um, well, so, one, we've had uh, people latch on to the Boogaloo who, like, I don't want in there whatsoever. Uh, you know, like, white nationalists, ethno-nationalists, uh, some, like... I don't really mind like any of the other anarchist types, right? Like syndicalists or, you know, mutualists or whatever. I, I don't really care. Um, but the people who, you know, attach to this anti-government mentality movement, I guess, whatever you'd want to call it. Um, and then they have sort of these ulterior motives for what they want to use like the chaos for. Um, that's something that, you know, we're going to either have to fucking disavow um, or we get dragged down with it and we lose, you know, the foundation of the message that we've been building up all these years. Yeah, that's yeah. the problem with the mainstream media actually publicizing it because like I've see, I see them saying white nationalists using Boogaloo and it's mm -hmm. like, mm, that's that's not good. Because that's yeah. basically slandering it. They're going to try bringing it down and they're going to continue trying to bring it down. I think yeah. the more it goes into mainstream, the less that'll happen, though, because people will be calling them out directly more and more. Yeah, I've noticed there's be been good. less reports of it, of them saying white nationalism as like the days have gone by. So maybe people are calling them out. Maybe they're changing headlines. I don't know. But Well, so I'll, I'll tell you right now, like, you know, the media is going to say whatever the fuck they want. Oh yeah, and they'll like they'll they'll keep going they'll keep going with it right they'll push that like they push the Russia narrative. Yeah, you know, they're starting to we, push. We again. could be, <laughs> you could be yeah, you could be like hanging clan members up on lamp posts, and they'd be like these fucking white nationalist boogaloo. <laughs> you know, like, they're not gonna fucking care. Well, so, since uh, we did mention this, and you seem to be overall in a positive mindset with the whole Boogaloo becoming mainstream, um, I think you made a post about it, but I can't seem to find it. How do you feel about not making top 10 Boogaloo pages on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't mind at all. I thought that was super funny, though. <laughs> like, acting to be all, like, bummed out about it. It was mostly just because <laughs> after... Um, after I did the last E Militia podcast and Guns and Guillotines was giving me shit for having more followers than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I had to That's because on you're on your like something. fifth profile or something. <laughs> right. I had to post something about like, you know, not um being in the top ten and being bummed about it. I mostly felt bad for Boogaloo Brit because he has more followers than two of the people who made that list and he know, has right? Boogaloo in his name and still didn't get on there. <laughs> poor, poor euro fag they're just like yeah whatever <laughs> well that's like yeah, european next <laughs> i mean he hasn't been posting much lately i gotta hit him up no he's been a little bit uh i think he's just been busy but yeah uh yeah, you kind of you kind of touched on this uh, do you want to talk any more about the whiskey warrior situation i know that's um like up in new york i know that's kind of a, a touchy topic still because we don't know a whole lot about it and we don't want to make assumptions. We don't want to take the cop's side. 
Uh, well, so, so like I, I know he got released, uh, I think yesterday or two days yeah. ago. Oh, really? Wow. Um, yeah, he hasn't, yeah. He hasn't reached out to anybody. Um, you know, I don't want to, I haven't heard anything, you know, more from him since uh, the second time, I guess, he got arrested because he was let out the day after. Um, yeah. And then when he went back into court on Monday, uh, they arrested him. Um, or on that like next Monday. Um, but that yeah. is just another example too of like when you're hitting the mainstream and shit becomes national news, like you as an individual, um, you lose control or power of the narrative that you're sending. Um, but yeah, that was just another thing where like I, I was trying to throw out as much information as I could that night. I didn't really have any idea what was going on either. Um, the like the reason that you know I was doing it was just to keep a fucking dude alive, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Even even if he had beaten his wife, the fact that like an APC, yeah, was outside of his door and all that shit, um, and he was cornered in, you know, I don't any, uh, so like cops escalate, right? All they do is escalate, 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 and their job, do, like, their yeah, job is and, violence. Yeah, dude, I I am a free fucking man right if i'm (laughs) corner and somebody traps me like in a house my flight or fight or my fight or flight um like fight instincts kick in right um and when it was just him versus like an apc and a bunch of cops out there uh i couldn't stop thinking about like you know ruby ridge or waco that was the last thing that i wanted to have happen especially to a follower Right. So it was just like pushing out as much information as you can. But that's when I realized, like, you know, you're just one individual and you're pushing out information into a world wide web. Um, I saw like 4chan started fucking with the narrative um, and pushing bullshit. Uh, I saw, yeah. um, I saw like K was doing the same thing. Um, It just went absolutely fucking bonkers. Um, And a lot of people still believe that a lot of that shit happened like f- a firefight at the graveyard you know oh, like oh my god that never happened yeah, oh boy like i haven't been able to find anybody who was arrested um at the graveyard i heard that people were dispersed uh yeah know, was it's just it's, it's stuff like that right so um to me i'm on the opposite side of the united states a lot of people tried to you know then claim that i was like a fucking plant or that i was you know trying to i had some like weird ulterior motives and shit like that but really it was just me on the opposite side of the country trying to push out information to as many people as i could you know because i had a lot of people who were sending me info and so i wanted to push it out um but yeah that night was just a mess but i think it was a success because we kept a dude alive you know, yeah, the community really if, came if, together. If, definitely, yeah, yeah. He did something if he did something bad and he did something bad, and I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt until I hear, um, you know, from him. I want to hear his side of the story because I don't trust anything being mm-hmm. said, especially after all those memos and shit that were pushed out by, um, local news and the cops um, that just had all these inconsistencies. Right. Uh, and like you said, even if he did beat his wife, like that's horrible, but. Yeah. That doesn't mean we want him to die. Like that's not proportional <laughs> to what he did at all. Exactly. So, and especially when we don't know enough information, like we're just trying to keep a dude alive, like you said. So, Bingo. Like give him. You know, I, I don't even like the court system, but I'd rather we have a day in court than he's killed in his house, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah rather be judged by twelve than carried by six. Yeah. So. And and I hate calling it this because we're talking about a dude's life and and freedom, but it was a good test run almost. Like we tested our abilities to mobilize people when we actually do have a, a real situation like that in the future. Um, I believe after that night, a page was started called um, like Red Flag Alert or something like that on Instagram. And they yeah. post about like potential situations like that. And it's good for mobilization and good for like we know how to parse information better about these situations. Like it, it was a good uh, learning situation for us. Yeah. yeah. And I hope that if people learned anything, that it would be you need to be extremely careful about what information you get and what information you push out. Um, like I know some of the things that I had pushed out, I can't remember specific details, but I know that I ended up being wrong and I was trying to correct it. Um, but 
you know, some people aren't going to see the corrections. Right. We have to yeah. balance speed with pushing it out um, with actual accuracy, you know, making sure we're saying the right things. Yeah, and yeah, generally, I don't want to err on the side of caution, right? But, you know, when a dude's life is potentially on the line, it's like, fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, you almost got to cut some corners, which sucks, but, you know, it's just slow is smooth and smooth is fast, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, in, in a sort of related topic, like, um, with all the shit that happened in Virginia recently and all the shits being proposed, what are your afterthoughts about, like, the Virginia rally since, you know, you had people on both sides of the coin coming out after and either praising it or dissing it? Like, you had sort of boogalicious types saying that it wasn't enough because, obviously, no, like, no real message was sent. There was still a lot of undoubt after the rally. And people saying, like, there should have been blood or people saying, like, well, this actually ended really well because no one died. There was no bloodshed. But it still might have seemed like a weak measure because nothing seemed to really have come out of it. But there's still a lot bringing up around the country now. So just what are your thoughts on these rallies and the Virginia rally in specific? So, like, when the Virginia stuff was going on and um, Trigi was pushing that a lot. um, Mm -hmm. I was sort of like in a little break from Instagram, right? I kind of go in these hot and cold moments nowadays where I want to post shit and then other days I don't. Understandable. Um, and I, I didn't, you know, even with the Virginia stuff going on, like that was big news. I wasn't really posting simply because, yeah, yeah I don't really, I didn't buy into it. I knew that it was going to be um, sort of taken over by like FUDs. Mm-hmm. And shit like that, which it definitely was. Like when I heard that they were saying the Pledge of Allegiance and shit, <laughs> the I pledge written by a communist. Stupid. Yeah, we'll just you know <laughs> pledging allegiance to the government that you're there protesting. Like, the fuck are you yeah. guys thinking? Are you guys retarded? <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, like I just thought I thought that was some bitch made shit. But people, at the same time, I was wrong in that people were very vocal. Yeah. And they were very aggressive about how vocal they were. And I think that that played a big part in them shelving, you know, for a year. Yeah. Uh, but I think the reason that they did that is just because they want to see what happens in 2020. Um, oh, yeah. They're delusional enough to believe that they're going to win, <laughs> like that the <laughs> left is going to win. Um, and so I think they just wanted, you know, an easier time going through uh but i mean shit i like i was i was uh i was really proud about how like aggressive a lot of people were and they weren't backing down um but then you know every time i say that i immediately think of Mm -hmm. when those cops were um pushing people out of the committee meeting and they all just fucking left oh yeah you know it's like none of you are none of you are just gonna take one for the team and get arrested you know, like it's just getting handcuffed and put in jail. Who fucking cares? You know, make a make a stand. Yeah, it'd but be like a four hundred dollar bail at most. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like who yeah. who fucking cares, dude? You know, stand up for what you believe in. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, I think it was. I think the best thing about it though was just that a lot of people in the area got to have like some face to face meet and greets. Right. It was definitely a good um, networking opportunity. Yeah, because generally, mm-hmm. you know, you're a fucking anarchist, so politically, <laughs> you're pretty lonely. Like, it's hard to talk to people about, you know, what you believe in. Um, and just to, like, ha- just to know that there's other people who think the way that you do and, you know, believe <laughs> so adamantly in individual rights and liberties, something that I think is, you know, it's a mindset that's kind of dying. Um, I think that that's important, but you know, overall, I don't think it accomplished much of anything outside of outside of that. No, not really, because they like what they shelved it for a little bit, but it's they're still passing shit like the red flag laws, which uh, someone in Florida, which has had the most red flag cases, it's pretty fucking scary. Oh, dude, shit, they're dealing with Florida, man. <laughs> <laughs> Two thousand cases powerful. here so far. Two thousand cases. Dudes- Armed dudes raping alligators and shit. <laughs> hey, I do not rape alligators at my ranch, okay? Yeah, Jay is a, a well-known gator rancher, actually. Yeah. No, no shit. 
I know I wish I was re- I would in a heartbeat ranch gators, but <laughs> I'm not quite sure how you would do that. I'm still figuring out the details before I go for it. He has memed about it before, at least. That yeah. <laughs> gator ranchers. It it's like a like a pig farmer. <laughs> like a gator rancher. I think the pigs are a little bit more deadly than the gators. Yeah, I, I always just think of uh, it's snatched, right? Yeah. It's snatched. Yeah. 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 Oh my god, Guy Ritchie is such a good director. No, oh, dude, the gentleman. I'm so stoked for that film. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. But yeah, I, I think Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels was his best. I agree with that. I thought that was a damn good movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. Speaking of um, movies and stuff, one thing we wanted to ask you about was uh, what interests you had other than libertarianism. I think Stratty wanted to talk to you a little bit about that too. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I mean, so, that's just something I kind of I like to, you know, know about people because it gives you a good idea of how they are even away from the idea of libertarianism, what I unites us and all that. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm big into golf. That's like, yeah. oh, really? yeah, that's, that's my <laughs> big sport. I fucking love golf. I've played it, you know, since I was little. What's um, it like being 50 years old? <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's your favorite golfer? Oh, who's my favorite golfer? Probably yeah. John Daly. Happy oh hell yeah, John no, Daly. Was- no, bro, yeah, John, yeah, John Daly. Like he's, you know, four ex wives, a gambling addiction, <laughs> drinking problems. Like he was, he was uh, out at a PGA event one time, and he's got the fucking shakes from going through alcohol <laughs> withdrawals, like out on the course, right? Oh, wow. And the dude, like, he never practiced. He just went out and he the ball hard, right? Like, that's, then, that's, uh, whenever, that's like uh, the opposite type of golf that I play, but just like. I think he's awesome. And then the fact that you've got um, the Arnie Palmer spiked lemonades yeah. that they came out with, and they were at 5% alcohol. Um, and then he created a, the Grip It and Rip It, which was the same thing. <laughs> just doubled the alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Like, how do you not fucking love that guy? <clears throat> I don't even like golf, but he's amazing. Just for those reasons. Yeah, I think that shit's hilarious. Um, but yeah, then like, uh, you know, if you're shooting... Um, like reading. I mean, and it it's yeah. not really always politics. Um, yeah. Like, what else do you enjoy reading? Yeah, I like science. I really oh, like yeah. science. Um, I like math too, uh, okay. especially like statistics. I like statistics. Uh, weren't, you, I really like statistics. Uh, weren't you an economics major in undergrad? I was. Yeah. Uh, Jay and uh, I are both econ majors uh, as well. God, oh, yeah, dude, yeah. I despise it. I'm I'm in yeah. econometrics right now. I want to blow my brains out. Mm. Oh, bro, yeah, econometrics was actually my favorite class. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah, I wrote this. I wrote this badass paper about um about uh-huh. uh like insurgency in <laughs> Afghanistan and what was causing it. Um, and like how to you know win the war. Um, and it basically just came down to like, oh yeah, they're uh. There really is no way. <laughs> like, this Ooh. isn't economically feasible. Um, Impossible. Thanks for reminding me I have a paper. Thanks for that. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, I mean, that's oh, cool Jesus. and all, but I trust you a little bit less now for saying that econometrics was your favorite class. <laughs> oh, dude, how, yeah. how could you not like it? I had a whole rant in another episode about my hate for statistics. So. <laughs> oh. Jay, what's the problem with stats? It's a fun course. I'm thinking nope, Peter, we're not getting no. <laughs> started on this. It's just it, it it's an it's an easy way to lie with numbers. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, you can, I guess, yeah. You can, yeah, you can basically get stats to tell you whatever the fuck you want. But exactly. Yeah. I don't trust. Peter really um, likes working with numbers too. You should talk to him about that sometime. Mm, Off the accounting, eh? Yeah, don't no 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 <laughs> nope. Not going there. Not going there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not today at uh, least. The context that only we understand. <laughs> and we're gonna keep it that way. <laughs> Are there any other sports you like? Because I know Stratty and Monty are big fans of the XFL, which is new this season. I've, so I actually um, I got a big distaste in my mouth for football after high school because um, I had a uh, yeah I had a falling out with my football coach because I was trying to you know get into the military academy at the time, and so I wanted to take some time to. Uh, the summer before my senior year, do some volunteer work to boost my resume. And I was going to miss two days of two days. And he like flipped out about it. Um, and uh, I, I never really like liked football. Golf was always 
my big thing, right? Like I was just a big lineman that liked playing golf more than I did football. <laughs> I thought football was a waste of time to me. <laughs> but after after I quit the football team, I just never really looked back. Like I did fantasy, um, just at work, kind of lackadaisically because everybody did it. Um, yeah. So but, I know like a lot of golf guys are into baseball too. Are you into baseball? Uh, I used to be, especially like be. I, I took a sabermetrics class. Dude, in sabermetrics is the shit. Yeah, I took, I took one of those. Uh, and then, you know, I was really into baseball for about a year or two after that. And it's just kind of, you know, I can't really sit down and watch sports anymore. Yeah, I, like I, I used to be really into baseball, kept up with all the teams, all the players, sabermetrics, all that. But I'm with you. It, baseball is a bitch to keep up with, especially, especially when you have other interests. <laughs> yeah, like don't get me wrong. I like going to baseball games and just drinking. <laughs> um, <laughs> Classic. But yeah. that's, that's all it is, right? Like I'm just drinking out at the outfield bar with friends. <laughs> mm, Budweiser. So, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, oh, fuck Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah other than that like you know it's just pretty basic shit shooting um walk my i have my dog every day uh that's a yeah i guess that I would, like that would be like my biggest chance. yeah that would be probably my one of my favorite pastimes now because i just get to go up listen to audiobooks or think you know and i can walk her for two or three hours like however long i want to mm-hmm. yeah so well, before we move on to the next topic, there is one more thing I need you to settle. So we did an episode um, like a couple weeks back now uh, about collapsitarianism, but we also got onto uh, a debate between Stratty and Jay mainly, uh, and Monty and I participated a little bit in this between uh, football and soccer. And Jesus Christ. Jay hates football. And I don't loves hate. Soccer. I don't hate football. I am just not a fan, but I do love soccer. I hate yeah. soccer. I yes. hate soccer too. Oh, Jesus Christ! Yeah. Okay, get out. Get, get out think, of here. I think soccer. We're done. Soccer is the. Oh, we're getting into this I, again. I can't. Yeah, I can't fucking. I can't stand watching it. Like watching soccer grown men is a flop. European sports that immediately just, disqualifies it. Oh my god! Yeah, have you guys? Have you guys ever seen Daniel Tosh talk about soccer when he says like, you know, it's the it's the most famous or it's the uh, most popular sport in the world, but most of the world's third world and. <laughs> Kicking a ball on a field of grass like would look pretty fucking good to me too if <laughs> I was living in a mud hut. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. you know, you know what, whiskey, you know what, whiskey. For... You're not getting the experience. If you're ever in Miami, I will take you on like a uh, on a game day to a bar, and you'll see the hype that there is for this. No, yeah, okay. soccer no, is dude, bad. That's, that's that's fair, man. If I'm like with a bunch of Cubans or something that they all love <laughs> soccer. Oh, dude, they go all drinking. I'll and... drink. I'll get super into it. And I'll the issue is the people shit for flopping, but <laughs> the American commentators are shit. It's not the same as like when you hear a, a Spanish dude, you just they have to be, yeah, they yelling, have to be yelling. Hispanic. Yeah, and he has like one minute sc- straight of screaming, Golissimo! When they have to go, that's that's when you know you're in a good scenario. Um, I do, I do love uh, soccer fans though. I like. Oh, they're crazy as shit. I saw like, you know, (laughs) Green Street hooligans, like every other fucking person. And you're like, wow, if that's what soccer fans are like, like, (laughs) they're more badass than the players. (laughs) It's a riot when their club loses. Yeah, it's insane to me. That's like nationalism to me. You know what I mean? (laughs) A bunch of grown men getting angry that their team lost. (laughs) yeah, but at least soccer teams are more legitimate than the states, so it's better than nationalism. <laughs> Fair, still same mentality. It's a, it's a collective as uh, yeah. That's the word. It's a cult, that's, but you know, whatever. Yeah, the word. I'm gonna call Jay a collectivist every time he he pushes for soccer <laughs> now. Okay. Yes. A left libertarian, fucking commie. Shut up. <laughs> Not a left libertarian. Anything right? You call me a collectivist. I call you a commie. All right, fair, fine. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I mean, my Discord crapped out for like a minute straight. <laughs> well, it seems uh, like it's uh, falling off a little bit. I think it's about time to wrap up. I want to end off with one more question. Uh, after spending what about about an hour uh, yeah, talking roughly. to us, about thir- 45 minutes to an hour, uh, what are your impressions of us? As, uh, since we're like, we are smaller pages, it's like we just ask a little personal <laughs> question like, on our part. 
um, smaller pages, at least compared to yours and definitely some of the older ones. What do you think of us and some of the other smaller pages that have come up? If you've even been keeping up with any of them specifically, yeah. what have you hated about us and what do you like about us? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. No, I, I love the, I love the smaller pages. Um, I love that people, you know, they've got enough pent up inside of them. That they feel like they have to post and they want to speak their mind. Um, that means a lot to me. And like people get so fucking wrapped up in the followers. Uh, you know, the best time that I ever had on Politogram, and I've said this before, I'll say it again, was when it was, you know, me and a couple other people just versus fucking everyone. You know what I mean? <laughs> just like slowly converting um, a few people at a time, um, you know, getting little gangs to go into <laughs> comment sections and raise hell. Like <laughs> that shit was so fucking fun. And, you know, it, it had nothing to do with like the amount of followers. Um, it was really just, you know, speaking your voice and like stirring shit up. Like you don't need a lot of followers to do that. And, um, <laughs> You know, generally, like you're gonna have, you're gonna be more effective at like turning people, um, or like showing them, you know, why you believe what you believe when you have the time to have like conversations with people, right? Like I get, <clears throat> I just get too many messages in my inbox now anymore to really, yeah, I can imagine. Um, to really like have uh, conversations with people, and that's one of the things that I liked most back in the day was people would just come into my inbox and they'd be like, dude, I've seen like what you're posting. Are you fucking crazy? (laughs) (laughs) What are you talking about? And then I'd get to have like these one-on-one conversations where we can like walk through why they believe what they believe and where I differ. Um, And it just, it got me, you know, really, really good at talking to different people who are at different places in their lives, you know, different cultures, different mentalities, things like that. Um, just like just seeing how to sort of weave arguments based off uh, what people believe and the assertions that they give you. Um, you know, anybody can do that. You don't need a lot of followers. Um, and I would argue that, you know, you're going to have an easier time convincing people if you don't have a lot of followers. Um, but kind of. Yeah, I'm really surprised that you even saw my uh, <laughs> message asking you to come on the podcast in the first place. Like, oh yeah. I kind of freaked I'll, out when you actually responded. <laughs> oh no. Like I'll, I'll try to go through messages um, and everything kind of filtered through people just like reacting to stories and then people asking questions um, or like sending memes that they've made and shit like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, I, I just think the best thing that anybody can do is not, um, not worry about followers just like be authentic and genuine because people smell bullshit oh yeah very yeah easy. definitely yeah. for sure pra- practice what you fucking preach um believe like mean what you say and then yeah just don't like don't fucking chill out don't turn into a dc drano or a two savage for democrats oh my god yeah um, or any of those fucking punk bitches like they're fucking they're losers dude you know like they're fucking empty um like that's that's all they have all they give a shit about is this page right um yeah and i was you know i can't really talk all that shit because i was sort of the same way uh for a long time i just like was going through this revolutionary you know way of thinking um like libertarianism seriously changed my life like it changed my outlook on everything um, it made things so much more clear. Like I, I was in a pretty dark place when I was in the military. Um, I knew I wanted out. Like I knew I wasn't happy. I couldn't figure out why. And then I just realized for me, it was all just the shit in my head. Right. Where um, like I was trying to make, I was trying to rationalize like being in the military um, and then not believing in the wars and, you know, just shit like that. And when I realized that I was going to, um, when I realized that I was going to potentially, you know, risk, well, I was going to risk my life for wars that I didn't believe in. Um, I was just like, fuck, I got, I got to get out of here. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then when I just, when I just stopped making excuses and I just 
you know, if something's true, it's fucking true. <laughs> you accept <laughs> it, you move on. Like you change whatever views you have. It's not worth, um, it's not worth being right. <laughs> if you're, you know, being right in an argument or something like that, if you're not actually right, like lying to yourself is so fucking stupid to me. And, um, oh, yeah. Really, like, that's one of the reasons I'm an anarchist. I just hate fucking being lied to. Um, <laughs> you know, like, with the media and, and government and politicians and cops and shit like that. And for all the memes and autism and whatever that go on on politogram, especially on the libertarian side, like, we like to have fun. Oh, yeah. But it really is it really is its own community, and it does a lot of positive things. Like, so I, I'm, I'm 19. I'm a freshman in college. I got a text from a military recruiter uh, a couple of weeks ago. And the first thing I did was took a screenshot of it and sent it to the Insurrection Inc. group chat and asked for the best anti-war memes they had and just spammed the dude back that's, with them. See, that's fucking I, awesome. I absolutely refused to do something like that. Yeah, like that is that is fucking awesome. Did you share that? Uh, I didn't post it or anything. You should have. Bro, you should. Bro, if you, yeah, if you, you could, should. like, post it, like, send it to me. I'll post it and tag you. That's fucking hilarious. Like, All right. That's yeah, the kind I of shit, definitely do that. That's the kind of shit that, you know, uh, I was trying to start at the very beginning. Um, it was just like shit stirring, right? Just fucking piss people off, get them angry, get them to try to argue with you and, you know, fucking demolish them. <laughs> <laughs> and rinse and repeat. Exactly. That's all I do. <laughs> yeah. Except so, I just piss um, people off. <laughs> But, you know, I also feel obligated to say, uh, like, social media takes shit out of you, oh. right? Like, that's that's what I've noticed in the last year. Um, like, as much as I don't fucking care about followers and stuff like that, there is a weird dopamine and serotonin thing that you get, like, when you post. And I just, you know, it kind of makes you empty in a way is if you invest too much of yourself into it like that's not really where you should be putting um most of your effort right yeah for sure there's more mm -hmm. important stuff out there even though it is there are, definitely a good there are more and important a good things out there <laughs> yeah like all my memes are really want to start <laughs> one one thing that i really want to start harp or uh, harping on is that um you know if you really like believe in anarchism and you really believe in like the non-aggression principle and you really believe in like the sanctity of the individual and things like that like you need to be a steward of anarchism right it's like the christians mm -hmm. always talk about stewardship i'm not a christian but i think that's very true the military talked about yep. stewardship on the officer side right we we're always talking about the stewardship of the profession um like you you're an emissary or in yeah you're an emissary or fuck what's the <laughs> What's I think that's the right word. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. no, you're a ambassador. Ambassador. Yeah. There we go. Um, yeah, like you're an ambassador of anarchism. Um, and when you do shit, um, and other people, you know, look at you, um, like they're gonna make a lot of judgments, and you're kind of fucking over the movement if you're gonna half-ass it, you know, and not practice what you preach. And yeah. Shit like that. So. Yeah. So yeah. mind if I ask one more question before we wrap up? Yeah, dude, not at all. Yeah. Uh, who would you say is your favorite economist and why is it Rothbard? <laughs> um, I think it's actually... Hmm. If it's not Rothbard, I'm very disappointed. I think it's Henry Hazlitt. Oh, oh that's wow. a good choice. That's a very good choice. Just, just because he had no formal education in economics. Oh. Yeah, was he a journalist? Uh, I think he was. Yeah, I can't remember. I just know that... Yeah, actually, he was. I just know that um, he mm -hmm. didn't. Yeah, he didn't start off as an economist, uh, but like shit, he just got it, and he was so good at communicating, mm -hmm. like what capitalism was. Um, like his book, if 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 you're gonna um, if you're going to recommend one um, capitalism book to anybody, I would say Economics in One Lesson. That's a very good choice, right? Yeah, definitely for sure. Um, right, whiskey, one more. Uh, so I'm not <laughs> sure if you're familiar with him or not. I, I mean, I'm sure you are because you're obviously active in the anarchism, libertarianism, and all that. So, uh, do you have any opinion on Lou Rockwell? <laughs> Strappy. <laughs> <laughs> We're just playing your favorite economist now. <laughs> um, I mean, shit, not really, and. 
Dude, I'm I'm drawing a fucking blank. Lou Rockwell. I found founded the Mises oh, Institute. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Duh. Um, I think what he's done with the Mises Institute is awesome. Cool. Yeah, I, I, was I think any anybody no yeah anybody from the Mises Institute like I have so much respect for them, um, and I'm still fucking kicking myself over the fact that I was stationed at Fort Benning, Georgia, and I never once drove 30 minutes just to go see the Mises Institute. <laughs> I was on a road trip with my family last summer and we were going through um, Auburn to get back to where I live. And I made them take a detour so we could drive by the Mises Institute. <laughs> exactly. I actually got to, I didn't get to see the Mises Institute yet, but I've been to some Mises, I've been to a Mises event and it's all, it's great. Yeah. yeah you and definitely Strat and I are going to Mises U this summer. <laughs> yep. I was supposed to stop. I was going to see Menace. He lives in Birmingham. I was supposed to stop at Auburn Mises Institute. I, I, I just didn't. I hate myself for that. Yeah, I live two hours away and I have yet to go. So, I mean, I'm, I'm in the worst <laughs> situation for any of you. <laughs> I, I loved Birmingham. I loved going out to the bars in Birmingham. Yeah, oh, they're nice. so good there, man. They are so good. It's just the, I think it's the people, dude. Uh -huh. Like, there's something about the people in Birmingham. I really like them. It's like Buffalo, New York to me. It's one of my favorite cities. <laughs> yeah, I live near Buffalo. I'm but I'm a Canadian, so i got to get my passport <laughs> to get there. That's fair enough. <laughs> no yeah oh, there's uh, just there's something there's something to me just about like you know um small town feels i i hate the city oh yeah you know what i mean oh, I, yeah. I got i've got i've got a theory about like <laughs> cities not really existing without the state um and then if you got yeah, that was, state, that's like, actually pretty legit yeah it most, i think most people you know cities just aren't feasible without a state yeah um and I think that most people would kind of, you know, move out to lightly uh, populated communities and it would be more like that's one of the things that I always say to vegans, right, <laughs> is that if you want to get rid of factory farming and shit like that, get rid of the state, get rid of cities um, and you're not going to have to, you know, you're not going to have to kill um, or have like one chicken every two square feet. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, supporter, you want to take us out here? I think we were pretty wrapped up. Yeah, uh, Whiskey, this has been a great conversation. You had some fun. You got some serious topics and some funny ones. I'm glad that, uh, I, that we all got this opportunity to talk to you, and I hope you had a good time as well. Um, thank uh, you dude, for coming absolutely. on. Yeah, no, guys, I, I love doing this shit. Like, it means a lot um, you know, to talk to people who I've had some like influence on the way they see the world, right? <laughs> like, oh, for sure. Yeah, it's always fun. Um, you know, so when you guys like get this all edited and whatnot, why don't you send me a um, like send me the cover for oh, it? For sure. and I'll, yeah, like, of course. yeah, I'll for sure post it out and um, you know, try to get you some traffic to the podcast. I really enjoyed That'd it. Though. Awesome. Yeah, thank oh, you. Nice. We appreciate that Thanks. a lot. Yeah, yeah guys, it's been an honor, man. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's been fun talking to you. Again. Please like, stay yeah, in touch. So uh, plugs are all here. Discord and uh, not in Discord. The show notes. Yep. Yeah. Plugs will be in the show notes in the description on YouTube. And uh, thanks again for coming. It's been a good one. This has been the Insurrectioning Podcast. Thanks for listening. Bye.